Welcome to Sweet 301. Big echo right there. There we go. Okay. Welcome to Sweet 301. Uh, coming to you live from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Here to talk about all the news and updates from all our cold club sports leagues. Uh, you can watch our broadcast on our Sweet 301 page as well as Facebook and YouTube. Yes, and remember to like our Facebook pages and follow our Twitter accounts for the latest news and media. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel for videos from around our leagues and to watch previous episodes of Sweet 301. All right. Well, Christian, let's dive right into some baseball. I mean, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's bring to the set Eric Curator. That's that guy right okay. there. How are we doing? How are you doing? Good. How are you guys doing? Happy July. Yes, yes. <laughs> Happy July. Um, so, on the baseball side of things, Eric, we've got... Uh, all, all region teams, all Americans have all been released, correct? Why don't you yes, take, sir. Us, take us through the all region situation? Yep. Wait for the cry on there, uh, for the screen, excuse me, the layover. Uh, all region teams were announced earlier this month. They actually started late last month, too. We did one per day uh, for D2 and D1. Um, check them out on our website. We got a headline post for every single one of them. Um, you know, congratulations to all those guys. That's a. Um, it's a great accomplishment. You know, you guys are the best of your region, and uh, from that, you guys were all considered for All-American honors, which we'll talk about in a little sec here, but, uh, you know, congratulations to all those guys. Like we were saying, it's a great feat. Um, you guys are the best of uh, your region, so props. Congrats to you guys. All right. Now, take a certain, now let's just dive over. Do you want to start with D1 or D2 for the, I guess we're going to start with the D1 All-Americans and run us through that. Yep, so you guys can see it on the screen here. We had a first team, second team, and third team. Um, you know, a lot of um, big names there. You know, just looking at it real quick, there's a lot of Florida State, which if you guys just woke up today, Florida State was our national champ. So they had a, obviously a lot of great players. Um, you know, other names that Scott, excuse me, stick out to me is Skyler Petrie. I'm going to give him a shout-out real quick, starting pitcher, Virginia Tech. Um, they were on the, He was on the squad last year when they won it. He threw a no-hitter at the World Series. Another phenomenal year. You know, we got other schools appearing quite a few times. Grand Canyon, shout out to those guys. Boise State, Utah State, another World Series team. Um, you know, just looking through the list, you got a little bit of everything. Um, so hats off to these guys, all Americans. You guys are the best of the best. 132 teams uh, with were in Division One this year, and uh, hats off to these guys. The full list is on the website, um, stats included, so you guys can see all the information and everything. But uh, yeah, again, congrats, congrats to all these guys, and uh, you know, it's a great accomplishment at the end of the day. Absolutely. One name seems to be missing from that list, though. Who's that? Orlov. Oh, yeah. We uh, shout out to Tulane. I don't know if uh, you were pulling our strings or not, but uh, quite the campaign. Hopefully you got a political uh, career in your future because um, you did some advertising, yeah, <laughs> to yeah, say the yeah. least. There we go. So hopefully we're watching. I assume you are. So right. hopefully we'll hear about it. But anyways, uh, moving ahead to Division Two All-Americans. Uh, you guys see the first, second, and third team there. Obviously, Grand Canyon, our World Series champ, is featured quite a bit. But uh, we got a nice balance of other schools out there, too. I'm seeing some Penn State, seeing some uh, CSU Pueblo, some Sac State, Western Carolina, uh, Fordham, another World Series team, um, Stanford making it up on there, too, Millersville. Um, yeah, a lot of schools um, included there, which is great. Uh, a little parity, which is good. And, uh yeah, same same things for these guys. Uh, the best of the best. Congrats. Hats off to you, uh, all Americans. Yep, absolutely. Great season, guys. We wish you the best in your summer ball adventures, and uh, see you back on the field here in a few months for fall ball. Yep. Um, all right. Um, so speaking of fall ball, that leads a good segue right into our fall tournaments, our, our envelope, our offerings of fall tournaments. We've got this this uh, this coming season. Take us through that. Yep, so that first one listed is Battle Creek Blast. It's the 8th annual, um, usually heavily attended out there by a lot of Michigan teams, Ohio teams, Indiana. Um, it's our 8th annual, and uh, I believe there's only one spot left. So if you are in that area, Division One team, Division Two team, contact Mike Galetti. Um, contact anybody at our office. We'll get you in touch with Mike, and uh, we'll get you either that last spot or on the waiting list um, to get you guys included there. The second one is the second annual Charleston Fall Invitational. We're shooting for 16 teams this year. Um, last year was our first year. Uh, we got it together real late, but it's a fantastic facility. It's uh, four turf fields. Um, 16 teams would be ideal. It's uh, September 23rd to the 25th in Charleston, West Virginia. It's actually just about 10 minutes outside of the city. But, um, yeah, Jimmy Henderson in our office is running it. I believe he's got eight or nine schools already. Um, hit him up if you guys are in the area and want to uh, participate. It should be a great event again. And the last one listed is Woodwars. 
Um, last I heard from Norris, there's only a couple spots uh, open, but this has been around for over a decade. He puts a lot of bells and whistles into it. It's a great event. You got the Swing It Challenge. Um, you know, it's it's a really fun event for you guys down in uh, the Texas area. But you know, last I heard, Millersville from Philadelphia has committed. And uh, they will be making the trip, so good for those guys. I think I also heard uh, Wayne State College, which is in Nebraska, committed. They're going to be making the trip, so um, it's impressive. Wood Wars is, uh, you know, expanding its reach. Um, rightfully so, it's a great event. Hats off to Ryan Norris, but um, yeah. So those are the three. We will have a couple um, to announce, maybe within the week or two, hopefully sooner. A couple in the pipeline. Um, just to give you guys a hint, we're looking at State College and looking at Greenville, like we've always been. So you know, stay on the lookout for uh, some updates on that front. All right, good stuff. Um, now, the off season is always a time of uh, reloading, revamping the league. Jimmy's been busy, you know, working with new team development, signing on new teams. Where are we in the process of of adding uh, some new members to the NCBA for this coming season? Yeah, as of right now, we got three officially. Um, we'll wait from the screen right there. Yep. So Cleveland State, who has actually been a member. Quite a while before COVID. Um, they had to bow out for a couple of years just to get straightened out and everything, but they are back. I'm um, excited to have them back. Fairford, f- excuse me, Fairfield <laughs> University and Stonehill College, um, first timers in the NCBA. Fairfield's out in Connecticut. Stonehill, I believe, is out in Massachusetts. So, um, yeah, three of hopefully, um, you know, a good handful, hopefully a couple dozen teams coming on. Uh, Jimmy's talking to all handful of teams here. So, hopefully, we'll have more and more to announce in the future here. All right. All right. And any housekeeping uh, items that the team should be worried about this off season? Yeah, the big thing is the rules meeting coming up on July 23rd, which is a week and a half from now. And really, the big thing there is, you know, this is your opportunity for teams to speak out, put uh, rules propo- rule proposals in to uh, have your voice heard. Um, you know, if you guys may want some things changed from the current rule book, you want things added, you want things edited and removed, um, the whole nine yards. So get your requests in. The emails went out from our rules rep committee um, last week. So you guys should have the link that'll take you to the, the form online that we set up for you guys. It's real easy. You just put all your information in there and mention what rule you want added, changed, removed, whatever it may be. Um, submit it, and then we'll bring it up at the rules meeting. And uh, if it's good enough, we'll take a vote, and maybe it'll be a change for next year. So that's the big item on the to-do list is the rules meeting. But obviously the paperwork, um, teams need to get their membership paperwork in for next year, reg forms, LPA, all that good stuff. So um, rules meeting, though, forefront. Please get your requests in before July 20th, I believe the deadline is. All right, good stuff. All right, thanks. Well, well, Eric, thank you for giving us a rundown of baseball. While we here, while we're here, while you're here, I am here. You are here. That's confirmed, right? I just read what's on the teleprompter. Right, exactly. <laughs> Let's dive into a little bit of the marketing department yeah, too, because you wear that hat as well. Yeah. Uh, talk, talk to us about what's going on there. This. This time of year. So the big thing, uh, July first, though the big discount period of the game. Um, you guys get two dollars off per cap, which may not seem like a lot, but you add that up over an entire order, you're saving uh, quite a bit of money there. So that's a good fundraiser in itself. But Felicia Battaglia right there is our uh, in-house rep. Uh, reach out to her. She's been around for uh, what seven or eight years now. So she's got all your files from the past. She can help you with artwork if you want new orders. So you guys want new designs. Um, she's your contact, your go-to gal for anything and everything within the game. Um, remember, all teams are required to wear the game, so um, you know she's going to be the one handling the orders no matter what at the end of the day. And then the second one we have listed there is Rawlings slash Easton. Uh, for those who don't know, Rawlings recently acquired Easton, so they're under the same umbrella. But starting July 1st, all NCBA and NCSA teams get 45% off uh, all uniform, equipment, apparel, and also they have access to bats too because Rawlings, or excuse me, Easton's our new baseball bat, baseball bat provider, and uh, softball teams also have access to that as well. So Mike Galetti's contact information is there. Um, hit him up for any price quotes, catalogs, information, um, all that good stuff. So yeah, teams need to start thinking about all that stuff because uh, you know it's July as we were saying. It's going to be August soon. You're going to start thinking about fall ball and you know give yourself plenty of time to get those orders in um, just to help with manufacturing, production, all that stuff. All right, good stuff. Well, thank so. you, Eric. Appreciate you joining us on set, giving us a rundown of uh, all things NCBA this month, as well as uh, the marketing Absolutely. deals available to our teams. Yes, take advantage of those discounts. All right, we are going to move on to some softball updates. And Christian, yes. I guess let's let's dive into the the top 20 that was most recently released it was the the end of season after world series top 20 kind of shaking out how everything ended up uh take us 
Take us through what we, uh, I mean, no, no surprise, Virginia Tech, yeah. our World Series winner, you know, takes the, the one spot. Yeah, uh, unanimous number one right there, rightfully so. Um, but yeah, a, a lot of uh, other participating World Series teams this past year make up that top 20 pool. Um, so congratulations, it's the final one of the year, and uh, we'll get back to it uh, for... 21, 20, or excuse me, 22, 23, but obviously the big thing to note there, Virginia Tech are uh, end of the year, number one unanimous team, um, so congratulations to the Hokies. Absolutely, yep, but before we know it, we'll be having preseason polls yes. coming out, won't team we? previews, uh, preseason polls, so All right. summer goes quick. All right, good stuff. Uh, another item that recently was announced is our Sportsmanship Award winner, a relatively new award, just year three of this. Uh, we, we try to find uh, that individual within the NCSA community that's, uh, you know, not only poured their heart out on the softball field, but done some good work in the community around their team and so forth. And uh, we're proud to announce uh, that uh, Claudia Ria. Or Ray, or Ray. we're going to find out. We're find out because yes. we have her lined up as a guest caller. Is our uh, 2023, 2022 Sportsmanship Sportsman. Award winner. All right, let's bring Claudia onto the show. Hey, how are you guys? Good, Claudia. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, yes, definitely. Claudia, what, uh, what's this sportsmanship uh, award mean to you? Um, you know, we announced you last week. What's, what's, it, what, what's it mean to you? Definitely a lot. Um, it's such an honor to just be, you know, recognizing that, you know, you can't put stats with or, you know, it's one of those intangibles that you can't coach, you can't teach. So I'm very, very like, humbled and honored to be named, you know, the sportsmanship award winner. Great, and and your president Madison uh, submitted the testimonial. Um, I, I believe you have seen that testimonial, but um, very compelling for the voting staff on this this award. But um, I think the big thing that stuck out to not only myself and and other uh, voters was the queen of the Detroit United Irish Societies. Uh, what does that mean? What does that? Um, what do you have to do for that that honor? Yeah, so it's based in Detroit, and it's a scholarship competition for young women of Irish descent, uh, ages 17 to 25. And it's actually been going on since 1959, and my mom was actually involved in it as well in the uh, late 80s, so it's really cool to have a family connection. And so the top prize is a trip to Ireland. So there's a queen and two court members, and the two court members get scholarship money, and the queen gets a trip to Ireland. But it's made to promote um, learning about your Irish heritage, um, offering leadership opportunities within the community. We do a lot of volunteer work like that and just empowering young women in the Michigan community. So cool. And how did you become the queen? What, uh, what were the prerequisites to become the queen of the, the Irish society? So it's a competition downtown at the Gaelic League in Detroit. And that is a 100-year establishment. It's very historical. So the competition evolves. You submit a biographical form. You submit um, a sheet with questions. You answer them. The judges go over that. Then you're brought up on stage and answer questions and answer different stuff about how Ireland connects with Michigan, stuff like that, historical things, you know, just stuff like that. Awesome. And you're uh, you're moving on to Wayne State next year, is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what's taking you to Wayne State? Um, academics. Okay. Are you going to start the club softball team out there? Uh, they don't have one, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think this is an opportunity for you to take your award and go out there and start the Wayne State club softball team. I think it's. I think that's a great idea. Who's? Oh, I, Madison, you still there? I'm sorry. Uh, I believe we had some te technical difficulties on our end. Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Now, uh, when I, you saw the testimonial that Madison sent in, what what does that mean when you see one of your teammates? Um, and I believe she obviously it's it looked like uh, she she consulted with the other um, officers on the team. But what's it mean that one of your peers nominated you for this award and obviously had such glowing things to say about you? It means the world, you know, it just it warms your heart to see someone write something something like that about you. I want to thank, you know, my teammates, the board for nominating me, 
my two coaches that have recently retired, you know, Madison, our new club president, for writing that up and sending that in and just writing such kind words, you know, and not a person that looks for recognition or anything like that. So it was really touching. Awesome. Well, congratulations, Claudia. You know, deserve uh, a reward, a, an award well deserved. Excuse me. I'm fumbling with my words today. Um, we had some really uh, additional great candidates who, who had compelling stories as well, and the, and the panel voted and, and found yours to be the most deserving. So congratulations to you. Uh, congratulations on your career at Michigan State, and best of luck to you as you move on for the next you know, stage of your career. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, Absolutely. you're welcome. Thanks, Claudia. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Claudia was, uh, I mean, like you said, there was a lot of great um, nominations, and we sat and considered and read, and that uh, was probably the most reading voted, I've done in a while, and voted, voted and, and eliminated, and, and voted eliminated again, and, and yeah, so um, she's well-deserving, wish her the best of luck uh, at Wayne State, and hopefully she, uh, we can get in touch with her, hopefully she will uh potentially get a, a team started out there um, at Wayne State. So congratulations to her again. Um, Well-deserving. She's uh, the third ever uh, Sportsmanship Award winner in the NCSA, something that we're really excited about continuing. Um, first one being, I, f uh, I forget her last her first name, NAU was the award winner, and then last year uh, Jackie McNella from, from Navy. Um, and then, obviously, this year, Claudia from Michigan State taking home the award. So congratulations to all those ladies. Um, but something, you know, we'll be continuing uh, to do in future years. So, right. Well, Christian, before we wrap up the softball segment, why don't you take me take us through the housekeeping items that these teams need to be uh, yeah. working on right now? Obviously, if any teams out there, I know we have a vast majority of the teams lead participation agreements submitted already. But if you're a team that doesn't know, if you have your uh, – agreement sent in yet or you don't have your agreement set in yet uh, we need to have that ASAP because in I would say the coming weeks we're going to be doing realignment and um, scheduling so if you don't have your paperwork in we're not going to be considering you for those types of things so uh, make sure to get that stuff submitted um, and I think those are the major things right now. Am I missing anything off the top of my head? I'm a little ill prepared. Now, uh, um, the, the the league meeting is coming up, or the league meeting just happened. Yes. And uh, the voting ballot should yes. be very shortly. Um, so you'll be looking for that in your email box here, uh, probably probably by week's end, I would think. Um, and remember, every team gets to the vote. There's four protect, p proposed rule changes on this ballot. Um, uh, make sure you cast your ballot one per team so that you have your say in uh, the development of the 2023 rule book absolutely i um, think that's it for softball so yes. hey let's take a quick commercial break we'll be back with the rest of co club sports after these words The game is the official headwear sponsor for Cold Club Sports. They offer our team's quality headwear, such as hats, visors, boonies, and beanies, for a great low price. All items are customizable to meet our team's needs. Contact Felicia.Battaglia at ColdClubSports.com for all of your headwear needs. All right, we're back, and we're going to dive right into some NCBBA basketball action. And Christian... VP of Basketball Ops, take us through uh, what's going on on the men's side with the new teams. Yeah, I mean, we're uh, we're really excited. I know uh, we announced, I believe, three new teams. Last show, this, sh this show, we are announcing two teams, uh, Dickinson College and uh, USC, which we're really excited about. They have two teams coming in, uh, USC Cardinal and USC Gold. That's Southern California. Um Last year, you know, we were, were really trying to break into, back into uh, the Southern California part of the country. Um, so a name like Southern California is going to help us uh, solidify some more teams out there. I know we have meetings with UCLA and Cal Poly Slow. Um, Alec Verhoff, our, our director of team development, has those meetings coming up. So I believe those two teams, the both USC teams, are going to be uh, the big domino and uh, us getting more teams uh, in that South uh, Pacific, or excuse me, Southern part of uh, California, the, the Southern Pacific 
portion of the country. So really, really excited about USC coming on board. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, maybe check our website. Make sure to check our website um, because I know we'll be hopefully adding uh, more teams in that area and across the country um, in the coming days and weeks. So pay attention there. But we're really excited about, obviously, Dickinson as well, but South Car Southern California um, just so that we can break into uh, a new portion of the country. Absolutely. And uh We've got some rules updates. We got yes. the, the the results of the league meeting voting ballot on the basketball side. Um, talk to us about these rule these new rules that are going into place. Yeah, so we have those. Uh, we actually in house have the rules updated in the rule book. Uh, they will be released uh, on the website in the coming days. Um, but the three major ones, uh, the three major rule changes. First, uh, we move the player removal date back earlier. Uh, many teams start the called the spring portion of the season in early January. Um, previously, the, the removal date was January 25th through 31st, and teams were actually playing well before that date, so we moved that date up earlier so that they could take advantage of removing guys that maybe from the fall semester team uh, maybe left or graduated. They can have the opportunity to take those players off um, before their spring portion of their season starts. So that got passed. That will be in the rule book. Um, we will be um, there's a lot of words there. Basically, that rule is saying uh, teams will be required, and it's not really a change. Uh, it's, it's just mainly the distances have changed in the NCAA as far as three-point lines go. Um, but all NCBBA M men's member teams uh, will be required to use the furthest marked three-point distance at the venue uh, that they're playing, um, unless there's an NBA marked uh, three-point line. Um, they wouldn't use that. They the the new NCAA three point line I believe is 22 and one and three quarters inches. Uh, if that's marked, you have to use that one. If that one isn't marked, then you can use the old NCAA marked line, which I believe is 20 foot nine inches. If that's not marked, the high school line should be marked. Uh, that, that is 19 feet nine inches, I believe. So um, if there's three lines marked, you have to use the furthest one. Gotcha. Got basically it. is what that rule is saying um, and then the uh, official qualifications is now an on-court protest only you can't do that after the fact uh, if you are a team and you feel that a, uh, an official is not um, up to par or up to snuff and they aren't uh, qualified high school qualification is what we require then you can contest that in game but it has to be in game it cannot be after the game um, so that moved to an off off-court protest only and then last but not least this is not a rule change but it's something brought up by one of our member teams to just add to our rule book so it's easily accessible but it is the overtime rules um, that uh, basically if you are if tied at the end of regulation there's a five minute overtime period and you play until a winner is declared there is no longer a tie um, but you'll continue to play five minute overtime periods until a winner is declared um, so that is nothing changed but it is listed in the rule book so that it's more easily accessible for the team so those will all be highlighted um, so make it easy to reference um, but like I said those are all changed in-house we just need to get those on the website and out to the teams and we'll be set all right sounds good and um, I guess moving on to the women's side of things, we've yes. got some new teams to talk about there, too. Yeah. Are we bringing on Alec or no? Yes. He, oh, yes. Oh hey, come on. Sorry. It's my That's guy. My, my Alec. I miss Let's my Let's go kid. to Alec. He's our guy. He's our guy. If he can't do it. You guys almost forgot about me. I know. No, I can never forget about you, Alec. Face. <laughs> so, Alec. Know, just, just new teams um, on the women's side. We, I believe we announced either the last episode or the one before that we have Washington St. Louis on board. Um, since then, we've added officially the University of Maine. Uh, very excited for Maine to be coming on board. They're just the second team so far. I uh, have a handful of other teams waiting on people or and a bunch of other teams I've had meetings, good meetings with. So hopefully there's going to be a lot more to come here in the next few weeks. Excellent. Excellent. Good to hear. And the uh, Maine's joining the, the New England Conference, I'm sure, which is already pretty pretty stacked with teams, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. They're joining the New England North. All right. Awesome. Um, 
And now you had a rules meeting. Uh, you had a league meeting not too long ago with a rules voting ballot. What kind of rule changes did your teams approve? Yes, yeah, so we proposed three new rules. Uh, all of them passed. Um, just like the men's side, the roster removal date, that changed from January 25th to the 31st to January 18th. Um, you know, reason being for that, like Christian said, they can now get those players removed before the spring season starts. Um, we also had one to do with forfeits. So if the away team forfeits a game to the home team, then um, they're going to be going right back there the next year. Um, the home and away isn't going to flip like it normally does. You know, just trying to entice teams not to forfeit. Just because you can't make the trip out there this year, you're going to have to go right back next year. So might as well get it over. Boom. And uh, lastly, um, something we added was if a student is doing an internship or a co-op uh, for the university that's worth less than 12 credit hours, but they're still considered a full-time student, then um, they will be eligible. So those are the three rules that we have passed. Um, you know, all three proposed passed, so we're excited to get those added to the rule book, and uh, we should have that out here within the next couple of days. All right. Excellent stuff. I like it. Uh, on the house, last thing, housekeeping items, what, what should your women's basketball teams be worrying about right now? Yeah, uh, just a couple things. Um, LPA's reg forms, if you haven't sent in the paperwork to renew for this coming season, get that in as soon as possible. Um, it was due June 1st, so you know, please make sure to get that in as soon as possible. Um, like I said, we'll look, should be getting that out here within the next couple of days or so. Um, and also any new team referrals. If you know of any teams around you that you normally play that aren't in the league, let me know. I'd love to reach out to them and see if we can get them in the league as well. All right. Good stuff. Love it, Alec. Good job, buddy. Well, hey, I think that's going to wrap up our basketball segment of this Sweet 301. We appreciate Alec uh, for being on for us today. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll close up with some football updates right after this. Rawlings is the proud uniform, equipment, and ball sponsor of the National Club Baseball and Softball Associations. Teams receive up to 45% off on all their orders. For more information, including catalogs and price quotes, contact our front office today. All right, so we're back. We're going to dive into some football updates. Um, uh, we have, I believe, add, added a new team to the uh, the league for this coming fall since we last chatted. Um, let's throw that up that overlay up on the screen. You can see we've gone to three conferences this year. Uh, the Great Lakes uh, fielding seven teams, the North Atlantic fielding six, and the South Atlantic fielding five. Uh, with South Carolina and Milwaukee coming on as independent teams. Now, uh, you might say, well, hey, the South Carolina would fit in the South Atlantic and Milwaukee would fit in the Great Lakes. Very true. However, uh, though neither one of those teams were able to uh, rejoin the league uh, during the period in the spring where we set conference realignment, released conference schedules. They came on late and basically could not get at added to the conference schedule at the time they wanted to join. So we've allowed them to join as independents. They're on their own to make their own schedule. Um, they uh, obviously have no conference championship to play for. But with this three-conference system, three teams, the top three conference winners, the three conference winners make the uh, NCFA playoffs this year, and then a fourth wild card team, which will be the highest-ranked team that doesn't win a conference, will also get invited to the playoffs. South Carolina and Milwaukee can be eligible to get that wild card. So their, their goal, I think, is to come on board, play some of our games, get back into the swing of club football, get the attention. You know, they'll be eligible for All-American awards, things like that, um, you know, Player of the Week awards. Um, but they also have a chance to, you know, potentially sneak into that uh, yeah. uh, playoff game. Uh, the playoff round uh, as an as a wild card, and, uh, and then I think they they also want to get their their place in line so that they can join a conference for next year. So all good there. Um, housekeeping keeping items on the football side. I know keep sending your 
Keep sending your non-conference games as you get them scheduled. Send them over to Dave Mogensen so he can get them added to the website. I know Nick Bongers and Dave. Nick's uh, going to be doing some stuff here with uh, a podcast about the NCFA. Um, stay tuned for information on that. I know he's going to be looking for, for guest participants as well as to you know get the word out on how you can listen to his podcast. Um, as we approach August, uh, footballs have been ordered. You should be. You'll get a notice on tracking once your football ship. But also, come August, we'll get more into um, team previews. You'll see that coming out from Dave Mogensen, uh, so we can start getting the the preseason polls set up, the preseason rankings done. Um, and there we go. We uh, we've uh, got a soft verbal commitment on where we're going to be having the national championship. We're looking to iron out the location for the playoffs as of right now, and hope to have all that paperwork done and uh, making those things official and ready to announce. Hopefully by the August episode. Looking good. Good job, Dave. All right. Well, hey, that's our show for this month. We appreciate you turning into Sweet 301. We hope you're enjoying your summer. Stay healthy. Stay stay happy. Put the sunscreen on wherever you are. Um, and while you're out there, don't forget about Cold Club Sports. Uh, keep checking in on our social media accounts because the, the 22-23 uh, season is qu- quickly coming upon us. And the next episode is going to be August 16th at 3.01 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on Facebook Live. Join us then to catch up on everything that's happening around Cold Club Sports. All right. Don't forget, it's a game. Have fun.